to see some of the stars. We heard the great stories about Zaza, what a professional he was. But Clay Thompson, he's a fan favorite and people are loving it. They do, and he loves social media too. I'm, I'm like surprised he doesn't have his phone out right now, like recording this whole thing. But he does have the loudspeaker. I'm pretty sure no one can hear him, however. Uh, yes, I'm fairly certain you are correct. But that doesn't matter. He's going to give it his best. Everyone's having fun. Clay gets it started. Thompson in the back of that, he's having some fun as well. You know, the marching band always kicks it off. It gets you in the, in the mood for a parade. And so when that cow band came flying off, you knew something special was going to happen, and it only continues. Absolutely right. I mean, it is full sidewalk all the way to the walls of the building, but people are working with one another and making sure everyone gets a good view, and we're getting a really great feel for what can happen at one of these great parades in Oakland. And I know some uh, pretty sweet uh, cars, rides I should say, are going to be rolling through with some of the Warriors ownership group. Uh, of course, the coaches are all going to be on one bus. That is headed this way as well. And uh, Steph Curry, I can't wait to see what he does with the fans. My goal is for him to reach out and touch us, Kelly. <laughs> Maybe he'll high five Maybe he'll us. Say hi to I know. Us. Take a selfie. We'll do a selfie with Steph. It doesn't matter who comes by. I'm going to do what I can to start slapping high fives. Whether it's a Warrior player or a Warrior fan, you're, just get into the vibe. You're just getting your fandom. Like you're going to go full fan on us. Look at this scene. You know, this is one of my favorite parts of the parade. When you look at the route, and it's interspersed between players and coaches and support staff, but then there are fans, and there are people who mean something to the organization. And nothing says parade in Oakland like seeing the fans walk up and down the, the middle of Broadway, because it really is part of the experience for the entire Warrior Brigade. Warrior Nation, as Mr. Fab said earlier, he said it's not just Oakland, it's a regional thing, and it's great to see everyone coming together. It's Bay Area, it is Dub Nation, and they were out in full force so early this morning. Like we said, some guy got here at 4 a.m., you're talking 5 a.m., 6 a.m. That's real dedication when you're talking about fans. You really love somebody when you're getting up, getting on bar, coming from whatever part of the Bay Area you live in to be a part of this celebration. And we are kind of spoiled. Three and four years, and they're talking about four, five, six. They want to keep this thing going straight into San Francisco when they move to the Chase Center. You know, that's interesting, Kelly, because when you think of championships in the Bay Area, it is all about multiples. You look back in the 70s when you had the Athletics winning three in a row, those great 49ers teams that ended up winning five overall, and then you've got the three with the Giants, and now three here with the Warriors. So when you win them, you win them in chunks, Kelly. <laughs> and now we're looking for a three-peat. We got back-to-back. -back. The next thing is a three-peat. As we know, the Warriors tied the Chicago Bulls for the third. Yes. So maybe that's the goal. Get a three feet, or no, actually, let's do a four feet. Let's just keep it going. I'm talking minimum six feet here is what I'm talking. <laughs> hey, this is one of the great moments as well. One of the great all-time warriors Al is Al Adels, the head coach of the team that won it oh, look at that ride back too. in the 70s. And here he is in a gorgeous car, the Impala. But this is a guy who gains respect all throughout the NBA and beyond. And it's great to see Alvin Adels right here in the heart of the parade and fans loving him. So many uh, former players, former faces, Hall of Famers, you know, that this organization has been tied to that, that still come out as ambassadors of the game, as ambassadors of the Golden State Warriors. Yep. Uh, it's such a, a rich history and it's becoming richer, obviously, with this Warriors team becoming one of the best in NBA history. We know they've already set the single season record. Now they got back-to-back -back championships, three and four, uh, as they get used to this whole championship thing. The rings, I can't wait to see Draymond with three rings. And then
see good to see the radio flagship station hanging out, having a good time. 95-7 the game, doing a great job. Uh, but we've got more and more Warrior personnel. Now you've got the dance team walking through downtown Broadway. So everyone is going to be recognized here. And I think that's just part of the festive atmosphere. Fans are entertained. That's another part of going to a Warrior game. Entertainment from the time you walk into Roracle till the time you leave. And of course, the uh, lovely warrior dancers are all part of that. I want to get on one of these party trolleys right here. Where they're they're having to do some of the work, though. They're pedaling. All you got to work through. too hard. You got to work. Okay, our next player bus is coming through. Sean Livingston, David West, the two wise men. Yes, the that's two a good wise call. Men. Yeah, that's Andre Vidal needs to be there to be the three wise men. Yes, exactly. But we'll go with Livingston and D West, who of course have been a big role off the bench for this team and giving them that leadership. Do you also think maybe they were tweaking people a little bit because both separately said, well, there was stuff going on behind the scenes. <laughs> Steve Kerr diffused all that stuff. But I could see a couple of veterans like that doing a really good job of just giving people little nuggets to let them chew on it oh, for a little yeah. bit. That's you know, the kind of vets they are. they got to keep things interesting. As we know, this, uh, this year's championship team, there's a little bit more adversity, a little bit more drama, maybe added to a little more satisfaction and winning it all because they definitely had some energy. Uh, as we actually throw it back to Greg Papa and the guys in studio right now here on the championship parade. Well, Kelly, Clay Thompson jumped out of his uh, double-decker bus, but uh, remember, he's playing with a bad ankle here. We, we, we did see him saintly medicating yes. a little bit. Left-handed. He's been, he's been medicating as well. And there's Sean Livingston and... And David yes. West, of course, Sean re-signed last year, Monty, a three-year deal for $24 million. What about David West? He didn't play much this postseason. Sure. Could this be it? Could, could he retire after this run, a two-time NBA champion? Yeah, I asked him about that after game four, and he said it's a summertime decision. <laughs> he said it's one of those things I'm thinking about. He thought about it last year. And he said, but in the end, uh, he still wanted to play. And he said, but last year, he, he decided if he was going to play anywhere, it's going to be here. He's already at that stage now to where he, he won't play any place else. Monty, he played better this year than he did last Certainly year. Certainly the first half of the year, he was really good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. Until he had that right arm yeah. cyst. Yes. Yeah. And he was out of rhythm for maybe a couple of weeks. He did play well yeah. at the end of the year. But the reality is, Saint, with the way you switch now, he's just not the modern day. And he can play four as well as five. But the way, all they do in the playoffs now is matchups. Yeah. And if you can't guard a guard, even if you're a big, yeah. uh, it's hard for you to play. So I don't know if it's worth it to him to put all the work he does right. to come back and then not play. That's the thing. You know what, though, guys? It's pretty hard to walk away from this. Yeah, that's... You know, when you're another team and the end comes, you say, well, you know, it was a great run and I'm grateful. But you look at this and it's going to continue. And look at the interaction of players and fans. Um, I could see him coming back. Your point, Pop, is right on about style of play. It's it's changed 180, the yes. NBA style of play. And you have to have mobility to get out there and guard pick and roll or guard isolations. But I love his presence in the locker room. Who he is.